Hello. Hey everyone. Happy Saturday and rainy in Toronto. Perfect um, day for a webinar. It is a perfect day for a webinar and a live. We're here for our live Q&A session for the upcoming 10-day lifestyle reset challenge that is starting on Monday, January 13th. Yeah, so we'll start off by just introducing ourselves while uh, we wait for everyone to join us. So I'm Christian Brown. Um, I'm a resistance training specialist and a lifestyle coach. And this is our third round uh, running this program. So we're really excited to, to do this for our third time, Steph and I, mm -hmm. um, and excited to you know help you guys out with this whole process. And we're all here to support each other. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm ready for a reset myself, you know, um, coming off that holiday vacation, eating a lot of junk food, um, all the kinds of things that you would expect. So looking forward to a reset myself. And um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so um, my name is Stephanie Teitelman. Mm -hmm. I am a holistic nutritionist and I also teach full-time Legree. I'm the lead trainer at Legree in Toronto at Studio Legree. So that's how I know most of you. Some of you are not doing it in Toronto, welcome. Um, we're really excited to have this going. We wanna, we wanna clear the air and say that this Lifestyle Reset Challenge is actually not a cleanse. We're here not to cleanse necessarily our body or call it a cleanse. We really wanna emphasize that this is a reset, that we're, we're looking at all aspects of your life, your, your diet, nutrition, uh, exercise, your stress, your sleep, we're looking at your digestion. We're looking at lots of things. And I think when you follow what we've laid out for you, that all of these things will kind of get a chance to reset your metabolism, everything. So we don't want to call it a weight loss program because you may lose weight by the end of it because of what we're doing. But we don't want to emphasize like that's what the purpose of our reset is. We really want it to be a holistic approach to to a healthy living. And instead of making resolutions, we're about building healthy habits. Yeah, and changing your relationship to food. So as you're gonna notice as you go through the program, you're gonna see how you feel as a result of eating the foods that you're gonna be eating. Um, and so a big part of this program is just gaining awareness um, uh, around the foods you're eating and the habits that you are using throughout your daily life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're still waiting for a few people to join, but we're going to quickly go over what you should have gotten in your package. Do you want to show them? Yeah, that? so I'll take you through everything. We got this package here. For those of you who have not yet picked up your package, uh, by the way, uh, if you guys can pick it up today, uh, we do have a wait list for this program. So um, yeah, today's kind of the last day for you to pick up your products. Um, for those of you who are planning on picking up your products today but have not yet, um, you can follow along with your guidebook uh, which we've attached to an email. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, we're going to go through it. So first of all, you've got your mason jar with a measuring tape in it. Um, so I just want to address this quickly. The measuring tape, um, as Steph mentioned before, this is not a weight loss program. Um, we don't require you guys to send pictures of yourself, um, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, unless you want you don't, to, unless yeah, you want to share. You don't have to use the measuring tape. It's not about that. It's not about uh, losing weight. And we don't want you to be judged based on, you know, how much you're able to lose and that kind of thing. It's not about that at all. Um, it's more of a subjective so, tool. Um, sorry, an objective, objective yeah. tool to measure and see like, within these 10 days or these seven days, what has changed in my body? Because you can't always, maybe you feel it differently in your clothing. But we had some people in their last challenges that actually lost two inches around their body everywhere. And it's not necessarily like fat. It might be that, but it, a lot of it is inflammation. So generally we feel puffier. You might feel like your body is just flatter. There's something about your body that's more at ease. and. A lot of it is inflammation, so you can actually physically see what you're holding on to your body when you are, you know, loading it with all of these high inflammatory foods and stress and all that. So that's what the purpose of that is to build a relationship with the foods you're eating 
and not necessarily the numbers weighing yourself or how many calories you're eating because we're not restricting calories either. We want you to eat. We want you to feel full. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to go into this thinking, oh, I got to suffer to make this. No, we want you to be able to bring some of these habits into your life and that's why it's a lifestyle reset. This is a, a small segment of our longer six week program. This is just kind of to get you going and then the maintenance after that is kind of the next step. We will guide you through that the last day, but there is much more that you can do to keep this going and we hopefully will set you up for success for that. Yeah, okay. Uh, so next we have our hemp pro and greens. So basically Steph is gonna actually um, tell you about each of these products uh, in a moment here, but I'm just gonna show you what should be included in the package. So we've got that product there. We've got this gut mix, uh, which needs to be refrigerated by the way. So just make sure that mm -hmm. you're refrigerating that. It's got flax in it. It's ground flax, so keeping it cold will keep it fresher longer. Okay, we have this coconut vanilla latte, Woo. which is kind of our fan favorite. Mm -hmm. That's the one you're going to have in the morning on phase two. Um, sleepy tea here. Yep, that one you're going to have that. before bed. Um, well, okay. And then we've got our Nuo Energy Balance. So this is kind of like a sort of a nootropic blood sugar regulating um, supplement. And it's pronounced Nuo Energy, um, kind of like new energy, but a nootropic is something that's going to help your brain um, boost itself. So energy with brain balance. And then last but not least, we have our guidebook um, as well as appendix. So there's two packages uh, inside of here. So just to be aware. The guidebook is more of like the written content that you're going to refer to. If you have any deeper questions about what you need to be doing, want more information, want more details. Some people really like the detail. The appendix is where is mostly visual, all of your charts, your checklists and things that are going to keep you accountable, your schedule that you can take with you everywhere. So those are more and your worksheets every morning, your morning and evening routine. So you have them already printed for you. You just need to have them out wherever you're going to do your routine. And all that written stuff and your quick start guide are in your appendix. Mm -hmm. okay, so all right, so I'm just going to quickly go over the done. products real fast. Basically, all the products that I've formulated are hand-picked because they are low inflammatory. They're low anti-inflammatory, sorry, anti-inflammatory. So a lot of the protein, protein mainly is a hemp protein, which it's very, very low in inflammation. It's not going to cause any gut um, disruption and it's just it's a good full spectrum amino acid which is a good protein source it's very healthy it's it's probably one of the best that I have seen that had the most success with my clients hemp protein so let's start off with the new energy balance um, these capsules I made myself there's ginseng ashwagandha uh, gymnemna go to cola these are all ingredients to help balance your stress balance your hormones give you some energy, you're gonna take this in the morning. It says two capsules daily. So you can do one capsule in the morning, one capsule in the afternoon. If you find that in the afternoon you start to crash, you can just have them in the morning right away with your lemon water if you want. Um, you wanna take this probably before 2 p.m. because it has an energetic effect. You want to be able to fall asleep later at night. So don't have it after two. If you forget, just wait for the next day. You could take two right in the morning, it's up to you. But I really like this. Every element of each of our products has something for the brain, for the body, and for balancing blood sugar, balancing hormones, okay? So the go-to cola is a really nice one for the brain. Ginseng energy, also an adaptogen. Um, the ashwagandha is like probably the number one herb that people recommend for women, for hormones, for stress, for anybody really, it's one of my favorites. So those are your energy capsules. You're gonna have your coconut latte in phase two. These are all for phase two. Um, pretty much our favorite. It's our got organic coffee in it, coconut milk powder, organic collagen, which is not vegan, but it is a good basis for where your protein is coming from as well. It's also great for gut balancing. It helps heal your gut lining, so we give it a nice rest and allow it to recover for this week. And it also helps with joints, for skin, for hair. So there's a lot of amazing things that collagen can do for you, which is one of the main ingredients. Um, the medicinal mushrooms, the reishi, the shaga, the lion's mane, and the cordyceps are like my top four favorite medicinal mushrooms. You're not gonna taste them. They're very neutral. Um, they're in there to balance out 
your stress, balance out, give you energy, help your brain kind of boost. They're all like have their own properties and to help with your gut and your immune system, like super, super good for your immune system. Uh, we've sweetened it with monk fruit and L-theanine, which is the amino acid that you find in um, green tea, which balances off the effects of caffeine, which is why we want you to stick to this. This has caffeine in it. Those of you that requested no caffeine, there is no coffee. We've just used dandy blend and cacao instead, just for the decaf people to give it some extra flavor. The last and but not least, probably the most, is the vanilla beans, the organic vanilla beans from Giddy Yo Yo. My favorite company, I work for them, but this has nothing to do with them. It's just my favorite product. It gives it the flavor, the richness, the antioxidants, the fla the just the, the richness, the yumminess. So this is your coconut latte. You'll do um, three tablespoons with one cup of water. So it's not gonna be huge, but it's gonna be nice and tasty. Have it almost right away. You don't wanna have it later in the day. Have it when you're doing your morning routine or some point in the morning to kind of get you going. The hemp greens, obviously, like I said, has hemp protein in it. It's got uh, probiotics, enzymes, some seaweeds, greens and reds for um, antioxidants. So it's full spectrum, delicious. You're gonna add this two or three scoops to your, well it says three here, three tablespoons to your smoothie. Um, and it's got coconut water powder, so really good for electrolytes. It's gonna help keep you hydrated. And the organic baobab, it's a fruit, but it's more of a prebiotic. It's gonna help feed your gut a little bit. And the lotus pollen, which is probably one of my favorite ingredients out of all of them. The lotus pollen is comes from a lotus flower, and it's just the pollen, very light. It actually has protein, but it also helps with balancing mood, reducing anxiety, calming the whole body and mind. So that's a really awesome ingredient. The gut mix is probably like people surprisingly one of their more like they, they end up liking the gut mix because they know how good it is for them. It doesn't taste bad at all. It's black. It's got charcoal in it, which helps with inflammation and bloating. Um, the main ingredients are flaxseed, hemp seed, psyllium husk, bentonite clay, zeolite clay. These are really awesome clays to pull out stuff from your gut and replace it with good minerals. So you're kind of detoxing this as you take it. As you take it, the charcoal is great for inflammation. Like I said, um, the licorice root is a good ad adaptogen, and vitamin C. Obviously, we want that. We want that high in your diet to help with your immune system, with every everything in your body. Calcium, magnesium, slippery almond, marshmallow root are just to help ease your gut lining, your stomach. So they're great herbs. The ginger root helps things move a little bit. Same with the amla, which is a it's a berry. The amla is like a full, a whole fruit, but it helps with digestion and the pre and probiotics, which are gonna help with your gut and regular and helping you keep you regular. So you want two tablespoons with a good amount of water, at least a half a mason jar. So about 200, sorry, 500 mils with that. You can have more, you can have less. Uh, you wanna take it right away because it will start to thicken up if you let it sit too soon and you're not gonna like the texture. So shoot it back real quick, just take it down. This one you don't want to miss, you have to take this one, even if you don't like it. But if you, if you find that it irritates your gut a bit, stop, maybe take it one or two more days and if it still irritates you in some weird way, message me, or just take ground flaxseed if you have some instead, all right? Another thing I wanted to add <clears throat> is yes. that this supplement you could use to take in between meals because oh, yes. it's actually going to um, tie you, you over. Up. It's gonna tie you over yeah. in between meals. So this is, um, you could kind of use this as a little bit of a, um, a good strategy to kind of keep yourself satiated yeah. in between meals. Yeah, so you can kind of use it when you start getting hungry after you've had your smoothie in the afternoon, in the morning, between, you know, the hours of like two and four or five, you know, you're gonna have your dinner at maybe six. You can take the gut mix and it has good fats in it, healthy fats like hemp's, hemp and everything like that. So it's gonna fill you, which is a good way to kind of tie you over, but you can also have your snacks as well. Oh, the last thing is the sleepy no. tea. You wanna have this like an hour before bed so that you can pee and go to bed and not feel like you have to pee in the middle of the night. So this is gonna help you wind down. Um, and it's just nice, you just do one cup of water, has a nice little saying on it and this should help you have a nice sleep. Mm -hmm. And don't right. don't operate any uh, machinery while you're using that. Don't dry after you've taken this because it will make you sleepy. All right, so moving on. Um, so I just want to cover some of the things that you guys need to address before we actually start the program here. So first of all, if you open your, is that the front page of the guidebook? Yes. So the, the liability waiver. 
Uh, so, apologies, we meant to add this uh, form onto our sign now sheet, but um, we didn't. So, uh, we're going to ask you guys to fill this sheet out and just take a picture of it and email it to us if you don't mind. So, if you could do that first things first. You can even put it into the Instagram group that we have if that's easier for you. Just take a picture, put it into the Instagram group so we know you have it and that you've read the conditions and everything and you're good with that. All right, and then next up, just want to cover some of the equipment that you guys are going to need. So um, in order to make your smoothies and your bone broths and purees, you're going to need a slow cooker, a instant pot, or a um, just basically like a big stewing pot uh, in order to make your, your bone broth. And then obviously you're going to need like a, a high speed blender for the smoothies. So those are basically the only two pieces of uh, equipment that you're going to need. Um, next up we have your quick start guide. So if you flip to um, the appendix pages uh, one to two, this is where you're going to basically um, fill out your, your measurements uh, and then your pre-challenge um, mood. Um, so you're going to basically um, track how you're, how you're feeling on a daily basis, um, like what, what your energy levels are like throughout the day. So that we have sort of a baseline um, and then when we progress through the program you can kind of refer back to it and see what kind of progress that you've made. Is that the... Yes, yeah, that's it there. So you have a before column and an after column in all these different categories. You just fill this out and this is pretty much your quick start guide. Everything on this sheet, these two pages in your appendix you want to do the first day or the day before so that you're kind of mentally prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next we have a weekly planner. And this is um, not mandatory, but we definitely recommend using it. So it's basically just a blank uh, sheet, Monday to uh, Sunday. And you can basically fill this out. And this is just a tool for you guys to use to help you stay organized so that um, basically you can kind of just fill out your days so that you're not scrambling around trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna find like the first couple days are gonna be a bit of a challenge. Um, just trying to, you know, get uh, used to the routine and everything. After the first two or three days, well actually, so three, third day we're gonna be starting the diet. So I'll say after like the fourth or fifth day, you're gonna get into the routine and it's gonna get easier. But mm -hmm. it'll help you guys if you're just prepared and you write out that schedule. Um, so you know uh, how much earlier you have to wake up. You know um, when to start your evening routine. You know like when you're gonna uh, go to bed because another part of this program um, a big part of it is sleep and recovery. So we really encourage you guys to have a consistent uh, sleeping and waking time for your circadian rhythms and just for uh, basically reducing stress and recovery, or, uh, increasing recovery. So uh, next we have your shopping list. So um, basically you're going to be starting your the nutritional aspect of this program on day three. So, which is phase two. Which is phase two. Mm -hmm. So basically we want you guys to uh, do your shopping uh, between now and Monday because chances are most of you are not going to have an opportunity to do your shopping um, in the week. So we recommend doing your shopping this weekend. Um, let you me can take this that. list with you. There's a whole bunch of options depending on what you find at your grocery store. We're going to go a little bit later in the webinar about like where you can find bones and broth and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but this is your sheet. You can take this with you. Take this package with you to the grocery store. Check it off. If you don't have one thing and you don't like something, obviously pick a different different option. We yeah, give you lots, lots, of, lots options. of options in there. And that is uh, Appendix 10. Mm -hmm. So and. Um, Basically, I just wanted to say the appendix uh, is basically your, uh, like, uh, use that package uh, wherever you go. It's basically got all the um, all the information that you'll need kind of to have on hand. So, mm -hmm. like, say your accountability checklist, your daily schedule, all the things that you're really going to yeah. need as you follow the program. And we gave you the program in this nice... Uh, plastic sheet I recommend just sliding it in there taking it around with you so it doesn't get wet or dirty or anything and you always have it with you to to keep going mm -hmm. and then basically we're gonna have to do your meal prep um, just be aware that your bone broth is gonna take um, uh, like days. a good yeah a couple days so it's uh, probably a good idea to get um, started on that in the next uh, day or so mm -hmm. 
if you started it on day one, it would be ready for when we start the diet. So you can buy the bones this weekend if you have time. If you don't, we'll go into where you can pick it up if you don't have that time, if you're really pressed for time. So these are the resources we just said you're gonna use on a daily basis until you get in the good habit of it. The very first thing is your expectation checklist. This has pretty much everything from start to finish by phase, what you need to do, including the social media posts if you are doing that, um, which I hope you are. <laughs> um, so it's a sign the, sign the liability waiver story, follow us on Instagram. There's a whole bunch of things that we do. Each story that you do post or whatever post you do um, has a, a purpose behind it. So just read deeper about, you can post whatever you want, but we want to give you a general idea of like what to post, how to post so that you know what, what to do and share. Um, so you can take this around with you. This is pretty much everything in one. This will make sure that you are on track. You've got your checklist here. Don't be scared of the checklist. They're really good just to make sure you're on track and you don't feel lost. The other checklist, which I think is going to be coming around with you every day. It's two sided here. Your checklist is your accountability checklist. So it's broken down by phase. It's got checklists all the way down. If there's no checklist on the first phase, it means you're not doing it. Like all the supplements you're not doing in the first phase because you're just doing the morning and evening routine and your water, okay? So phase two, the food. After phase two, everything is pretty much the same. So take this around with you. It looks like a lot, it's really not. We've broken down the morning routine into each check mark. So it's not that much, it feels really gratifying to check it off. On the back of the sheet is your 10 day schedule. You'll see the first phase, there's nothing except the fat, the, um, the morning and evening routine and the water and the intermittent fasting, which you'll be stopping eating at seven. Okay, so take this with you. If you get lost, all the information's here. In your actual guidebook, there's more information. So this is pretty much just the shorthand version. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're gonna break down the four phases. The reason we made phases is so that you feel prepared and um, you, you kind of like know what's happening in your body and kind of break it down a little bit more awareness and then it will kind of send you off on phase four. So phase one, is the awareness phase, so is day one and two. This is where you're just kind of gathering your thoughts, setting your goals, doing all you know your food and mood log for the first two days. You're not really changing your diet. You might be just cutting down, if you're drinking lots of coffee or eating lots of sugar, you might just cut down so that when day three starts, you're not like cold turkey, huge headache, because you just cold, like have six coffee to, coffees a day, now you're only having one. Start cutting down things so that you're feeling a little bit better on mm. day three. Yeah, <clears throat> just uh, to um, add on to that point about the coffee, so uh, we basically just want you to decrease whatever you're drinking right now. That's a common question we've been getting a lot of. Um, so we do have give you the coffee supplement in the morning. If you're someone who, like Steph just said, who drinks five coffees a day, we recommend that you just decrease that as much as you can. And we're not trying to tell you to go cold turkey because I know that's um, gonna be really challenging and that's not necessarily the purpose of this program. But in order to get some good stress release um, results um, and to kind of, um, you know, for, for reducing adrenal fatigue and those kind of things, we do recommend that you decrease that amount of um, coffee intake. So I'm just gonna walk you through the first two days of the program. So this is basically, this is the awareness phase, and this is where um, we're not gonna ask you to make any nutritional um, changes. Um, in fact, we just encourage you to continue along eating the way that you've been eating um, so that you can kind of gain some awareness around how you're um, feeling as a result of eating specific foods and as and how you're feeling um, as a result of you know certain habits that you're following throughout the day. In terms of feeling too, like the food and mood log, he's gonna go into a second. You want to not just about how you're feeling physically, like bloated, energized, but like your mood. Are you crabby? Are you crashing? Are you happy? Are you is your mind clear? Are you feeling like tired? So those kind of things is like how you're feeling. We want you to kind of see like, oh, I ate this, and then two hours later or one minute later, I felt like this. So we want you to make those little links and correlations between your food the first two days, and then we go into the diet. Yeah, so we've given you a schedule that you can fill out. 
So basically, uh, what we recommend is eating whatever you're eating, uh, write down the amounts. You don't have to get too specific, but at least just writing down all the individual foods that you're eating um, throughout each meal. And then um, writing the response that you feel from that meal, um, say about you know half an hour to an hour afterwards. And just do your best with this. Um, you're not you're not submitting this. It's more for your own awareness to make links like oh I ate this and I felt this way. So there's columns for breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, and if we're we're stopping the food at 7 p.m. on these two days. Yeah, I'll get into that. So um, yeah. okay, so next we have your morning and your evening routines. So on days one and two, uh, the only habits that we are bringing in, um, other than the food and mood log that we just mentioned are the morning and evening routines. So basically we encourage you to get up at least five minutes earlier. I would encourage maybe a little bit more. Um, give yourself like about 10 minutes to do this. So basically we're going to be going through uh, box breathing, gratitude, goals, and visualization. So it's not going to take too much of your time, but we want to just basically start building the consistent habit of going through this routine um, and just building your day off of a point of, you know, coming intention. from a, uh, intention, feeling mm -hmm. uh, gratitude and positivity and setting yourself up for success, really. Um, so that's the morning and evening routines. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about how to go through this. Um, There's more as, detail in the book. As we go through the program, we're actually going to send you out some emails. Uh, and one of them, we're going to give you a video walking you through the routines. So um, just do your best in the beginning. We're throwing a lot at you, but um, we'll give you more information as we go. Okay, so next, the only other thing that you really need to be aware of on the first two days, other than meal prepping and getting ready for day three, is time-restricted eating. So um, how this is gonna work is basically we want everyone to stop eating at 7 p.m. Um, and we're gonna encourage you to, to um, not eat for 12 to 16 hours so this could uh, really vary depending on you know your tolerance uh, for fasting if you've never fasted before just try 12 hours if you have fasted a lot and you want to really push yourself uh, go for 16 but it's yeah it's it's just a small portion of this program and pushing yourself further than 16 hours is not necessary especially for women yeah mm -hmm. so um, another question that we commonly get around the fasting is people ask us well should I not be having my coffee in the morning or my lemon water or my lemon water uh, right but we're not going to include that in this program so we're basically just going to tell you to fast to 12 to 16 hours and then you're going to break that fast with your first meal. So don't worry about the lemon water or the coffee. So if you really want to be strict, if you're someone that already fasts and is comfortable with it, you could even cut your food time off like sooner than 7. If you know you wake up at 6 a.m. and you want to have that 12 hours, cut it off at 6 so that you wake up at 6 and then you can have your lemon water and your, your coffee. Or you just wait a little longer. It's kind of up to you. Some people really just want to like go 16 hours and that's fine. Then you can have your coffee 16 hours later. So we're just going to kind of leave that up to you. But we just want you to stop eating at 7. Nothing else except the sleepy tea before you go to bed and all that. All right, so that's phase one. Phase one is really just that awareness. Phase two is kind of the empower phase where we start to give you the power to change your diet. We give you all the tools you are changing. You're starting to implement the product. So this is day three, four, um, five, and six, okay? So this is three days, sorry, four days. And these are gonna be the hardest days probably to figure out. But once these are over, it's gonna become so easy. Once you figure this out um, and you follow the schedule, you use your, your food, your products, you take them with you if you need to, you take everything with you, then you should be good to go. So your body's gonna be making the most changes here. You really wanna pay attention to how you're feeling, what your energy levels are. You're gonna be drinking lots of water anyway, so your energy's gonna be good. But you, if you're feeling hungry, we want you to eat more. So your smoothies are packed. Um, with nutrients, you've, you're going to get your berries, your greens, your, your healthy fats in there and your water and everything. So that's going to be like a good part of the, the morning sustenance. And then you have your gut mix. But in between, if you really feel like you need something, go to the snacks list. We give you a whole bunch of snacks. Some are unlimited. Some are, you know, you want to limit to certain sizes. But have those snacks. And during those times, we really want you to focus on 
chewing. So we want to try to keep this as liquid diet as possible so to give your break your digestion and your gut a break from having to break down food and spending energy that way and this way you get more energy after. Um, so I yeah. would also just say <clears throat> over those uh, the course of those first few days where we're implementing the nutrition aspect of the program uh, have the expectation that you may feel a little bit tired and you know not your normal self. Headachey um, sometimes. Yeah, that's that's gonna be um, expected. So um, if you feel that way, um, don't worry about it. Just keep powering through and stick yeah. to the program. And, um, and message, use the Facebook group as your support. Like if you're feeling something a certain way, a certain day, you want to be like, hey guys, how are you guys feeling? I'm feeling great. Or I have a headache today. How is everyone feeling? Yeah. Like that's what it's there for to not feel like you're alone. Like, oh, I have this headache. Is it just me? We are there to answer your questions. We're going to be checking it. So that's where you want to put all of your questions into the Facebook group as well. So you have a whole list here of the superpower foods and the uh, energy sucking foods and you have some snack lists as well. But refer to the top portion. You're not having any animal protein. The only animal source, if you choose to do a bone broth, is the bone broth, is the collagen and all the good stuff in the broth itself. Not the meat part, but just the broth. You're gonna get rid of the bones and everything. So you're not eating, you know, the wild. This section here says you can eat this after the 10 days. If you wanna introduce healthy foods, you can stick to this as a general guide of like the good foods are good that are gonna help support your brain, your body, and your gut. And these foods you wanna just stay clear from as best as possible to feel your best. Um, so yeah, snacking, we really wanna make sure that you're eating enough, especially on workout days, which Christian's gonna go into soon. On workout days, you can have more root vegetables, things with a little bit more carbs in it. Um, so, yeah, we want to make sure that you're getting enough food. If you're feeling hungry, it means you're not eating enough. This is where you got to listen to your body. Those signals or your body, your hormones kind of adjusting and telling you, I'm hungry now, I'm thirsty now, oh, I'm satiated, I don't need to eat. So we really want you to listen to your body during that time. And remember, we're not restricting your calories. We're not counting calories. We want you to put it in and stop eating when you're full. And if you're hungry again, eat again, but stop eating by seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to go into the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the exercise portion of this program, uh, first off, I just want to say it's not an exercise specific program, so we're not trying to, um, you know, exercise as intense as we can here. We're actually trying to kind of, if say you're someone who exercises uh, frequently throughout the week, we're actually going to be reducing your exercise a little bit just because your body's going through so many changes. We're eating um, mostly, you know, liquid diet. Um, I mean, you're getting a lot of nutrients in, but we're in a, potentially it's kind of a calorie restricted diet. Um, and so, and we're basically just uh, undergoing a lot of changes here. So um, I just wanted to cover. Um, so before you go into that, just he said something about, so if you're actually feeling hungry, you could actually make yourself a second smoothie and have another smoothie if you're working out that day. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do that if I'm feeling low energy, I make myself another smoothie. Mm -hmm. So basically throughout this program, we're going to encourage you to exercise no more than three times. Um, so two to three de uh, times. And the workouts that we're going to be giving you, we have uh, it listed in the appendix, I believe. Or yeah, is it the guide? It's in the appendix. Okay, the appendix. Um, we're also going to be sending you a video taking you through the program, uh, through the workout. Um, and it, on paper, it looks like a very simple, easy workout. If you're, say, someone who's a little bit more advanced, um, you can make this a pretty challenging workout and I'll tell you how uh, in a moment here But this is also a great workout for beginners um, people who have different injuries uh, basically What my approach here with the exercise program here is to be as joint friendly as possible um, Basically the intention throughout all of these exercises uh, is to focus on challenging muscles and not movements so Generally speaking, we're going to be using much slower tempos, training tempos, like we're going to be doing 10 second reps, um, and we're going to be doing uh, holds in some cases, like isometrics. Um, so basically, um, I'm going to also encourage you guys to time your exercises. So I'm going to get you off the um, kind of focus of counting reps and sets and that sort of thing, and instead just focus on how much time you're actually spending on each exercise and focusing on how much you can challenge the muscle that you're training. So, like what you're feeling, like your internal sensations. Exactly, yeah. So we're getting you out of the external sort of focus of how many reps I'm doing 
and bringing you more kind of in touch with your body, focusing on the internal um, aspect of the exercise. So uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we're going to send you a video and encourage you guys, even if you have your own exercise uh, program that you're following, to give this uh, a shot. Um, At least once. Give yeah. it a try. See if it's for you. And I also wanted to say, if you are um, someone who's, say, going to classes, say you do spin classes or whatever it is, I just encourage you to kind of decrease um, your intensity a little bit. Um, you're not going to lose out on any, you know, uh, progress that you've currently built yourself up to. Uh, it's just a short period where we're going to um, reduce your intensity for, for, for a little bit of time. Right. I also want to say that a lot of people think that they need to exercise to lose weight and mm -hmm. exercise is a big part of it. But a lot of us who like who already exercise a lot sometimes take it too far, and we want to kind of cut you back to that like high impact, high intensity, stress inducing, go 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 feeling to something a little more calm, like something more like Pilates or yoga or just simple walking, maybe like gentle ru running, but not sprinting. Something that's not gonna go make your hormones go crazy. And mm -hmm. the cutoff time for that is five o'clock. So we want you to do your best to, to keep your workout in the morning, in the afternoon, maybe the mid-afternoon. The evening can throw off your, your sleep, can throw your, your hormones off and could interrupt your sleep. So during this week, if you can just plan out your workouts in that planner to be sooner or earlier, or if you can't find time, put it in you know, your break at work and just follow the videos that we're going to send you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so we won't talk too much more about exercise yeah. here. Uh, let's move on to phase three, which is habituate. Uh, so that is days seven to nine. So at, by this point, you're going to be pretty comfortable following the program. It's going to become kind of a routine for you. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be feeling probably pretty awesome, actually, once you get over that initial three to four day hump after having started your uh, the nutrition aspect of things. Um, so in this phase, we want to again come back to awareness. So um, checking in on how you're feeling, what uh, what has worked for you throughout this program, asking yourself these kind of questions, um, like how do I feel when I eat these foods? Um, how do how am I functioning throughout my daily life when I'm you know consistently following this morning routine? What things are working for me? And you can actually so a big part of this program is actually um, gauging the habits that are working best for you and for you to decide what you want to um, use in your lifestyle um, beyond the program so here's where we're going to kind of raise awareness around that so you can kind of ask yourself the questions of like what could, what's useful to me as I um, like what am I what do I want to carry for it after I finish this program and sometimes I find that when you're in the middle of something that's challenging that's different that's new that's not in your norm we are challenging our brain to you know make shifts and change and sometimes when you're in the middle of that thickness it's hard to kind of see what's working so when we go into phase three for habituate we can look back on the past four days and be like oh maybe this is something is actually working like how am I feeling these few days and now that that initial hump is over that maybe it actually something was working for me or this is working or it's not working you kind of have to like give yourself a moment of you know stop look back and then how do we move forward which will take you to day 10 which is the last phase mm -hmm. which you and that's the maintain cover. yeah so um, we want this program to allow you to continue on the last couple we stopped and a lot of questions about this so this final day is another day of awareness for you to plan out your next month to see how these foods are challenging you and how they're affecting your body if you're someone with a lot of sensitivities and know you might have some suspect foods like oh I eat eggs every single day but I I don't know if it's eggs that are bothering me maybe you use that one food to be the first thing you bring back into your diet and you test it for about two to three days. Sometimes it can affect you two or three days after maybe your symptoms come back. So that's what that day 10 um, form is for. So you're gonna go back to your food and mood log that day and go back to logging your food. Where is it? Day 10, phase four. Go back to logging your food. If you wanna keep, if you wanna continue the diet, you should probably have enough um, of the greens or whatever to keep going another day or two. 
So if you want to keep going, if it feels amazing and you're in a good habit and you're like, I'm going to keep doing my lemon water, I'm going to keep doing this, keep going with it and then maybe start introducing one thing at a time. Um, see how you feel if you end up eating, you know, after seven, how does your sleep get affected? And so it's just another day of that awareness, introducing one food at a time, just so you can really know what is what. When you stop for seven days eating your normal diet, you kind of don't know what's causing things. So you want to gain that little bit of awareness to be like, okay, this is almost like an elimination diet. You're eliminating everything from your diet that might be causing inflammation and you're adding things back in. So probably sources of protein are going to be the ones that you add back in. Maybe it's chicken the first day and then maybe two days later you can use that same form and, and add in beef or whatever it is that you eat, just see how you, it affects you. And we would recommend not jumping full force back into your your diet with like heavy grains and sugar and coffee. So day 10 still, we want you to keep the guidelines, but start introducing things slowly. And day 10 is also where you're going to be um, filling out the accountability action plan worksheets, kind of like setting yourself healthy habits. You've got four weeks of charts here. You're gonna make your own habits. So the ones that were working for you that you thought about in phase three and habituate, you're gonna write them down and then you have daily checklist to see if you're actually following through with those habits just to see you know to actually make those habits and after a month they should probably become like real habits so you won't need this anymore mm -hmm. <clears throat> i just wanted to say with sorry adding uh foods back into your diet mm -hmm. pay attention to some of the common symptoms that you may be currently feeling when you're <clears throat> after eating certain foods say right. so you get nasal congestion or bloating or um, IBS or it could be um, brain, fog. brain fog or um, energy crashes yeah. like these are very common symptoms that a lot of people feel when they have specific food tolerances uh, intolerances so um, as you're reintegrating these foods back into your diet those are the kind of symptoms you want to watch out for because you may notice by the end of this program by day 10 you're probably not feeling any of or you're probably not noticing any of those symptoms and then you when they do come back you'll be like oh my god that's like you'll just have that moment of wow this is actually affecting me even though yeah. i thought it wasn't mm -hmm. so on day 10 you're also going to want to fill out um the after the after the program here. So just like noticing before you start introducing new foods, like how is your energy, how is your sleep digestion, energy level? Did you feel more fulfilled, more motivated, etc.? So just to give you that before and kind of after, fill that out on the last day or on the day after, whatever, wherever you can get to it. And that's, oh yes, one more thing. This is also optional. If you have other goals that you want to set for yourself, um, we gave you different categories personal development, morning, evening routine, nutrition, exercise, intellectual, financial relationships. You can set out some goals for yourself for the next month to, to kind of tie back in to your habit planner. And how are you going to achieve these goals? You need to maybe set down some habits that are going to help you achieve these goals. So this is kind of a tool for you. It's not mandatory, but a good tool to kind of help you keep going into the next phase so that you don't go right back to where you were before. Mm. All right. So the last phase, like the completion phase, is the day after where you sustain and you keep going. Those are the tools that you're going to use to keep going. Um, also, you can uh, keep contributing to the Facebook page uh, at this point. Feel free to keep using it and encouraging each other to keep going on. Yeah. Um, anyway, that, that's it for the program. Let's yeah. talk about the social media. Yeah, so the social media part, like I said, in the expectation checklist, the very first checklist you'll see in your guidebook, in your appendix. Um, there's seven posts if you could they don't have to be full feed posts on your instagram but like stories just like of your morning routine of the products tagging at b3 wellness transformation and hashtag brain body balance or b3 wellness transformation if you can for each post just to help us get the word out and we'll repost that so all the things on here are what are required of you that you signed on the sign now if you did want to get that refund for giving us all your the feedback survey, the written testimonial, the video testimonials, anything that you want to add in there. You have one week to fill it out. Um, so we're going to give you the Thursday following the, the challenge. So from the 23rd on the 30th of January is when your last day to submit all of this stuff. We will be sending that to you in an email. Um, that's your cutoff the evening of the January the 30th on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So posting at least seven times, mm -hmm. um, if you can get that in there during the 10 days, just to you know help us out there. Um, one of them is like unpacking your package. Like, oh wow, this is me unpacking my package. Look what I got, all these great products. Um, yeah, that's... I yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit. Um, we don't want to take up too much more of your time here. But let's just talk about the bone broth um, and meal prepping because that is going to be one of the biggest questions that comes mm -hmm. up. So Steph's going to walk you through some of the meal prep. All right, so we will be sending you videos on meal prep and how to make all of it. And I'll be posting a, a haul that kind of tells you a little bit more about the groceries that I bought and, and how to make the bone broth. But a lot of people are asking me, where do I get bones? Where do I get bone broth? I don't have time to make broth. How do I do this? So if you're choosing to make bone broth or if you're making a vegetarian broth, you're not going to use bones. You're just going to use a whole bunch of vegetables and add a little bit of oil, like coconut oil, some form of healthy oil to it to give it some sustenance because the, the bones have a lot of fat in them. Um, you can go to farmer's markets. They have lots of grass-fed beef bones, lamb bones, chicken bones, turkey bones. If you have them left over from like past meals, you can use those. Um, healthy butcher usually has bones most organic grocery stores should have bones um, if you go to a healthy yeah healthy butcher Sanigan's meat lockers are really good one in Kensington these are all in Toronto by the way um, so if you have any more questions about like where to get bones a lot of the farmers markets have them and yes so the other thing is you can buy pre-made bone broth if you don't have time or don't want to, if you're not into the cooking thing, it's actually so much cheaper to buy and make it. But the cheapest I've seen a pre-made bone broth that has good quality bones is at Sanigan's Meat Locker. It's on Kensington, in Kensington. Um, it's about $8 for, a, I think it's a quart. They have chicken and, and beef. They also have it fresh, so fresh or frozen. So you can pick it up there. Impact Kitchen has some good broth that I've heard of. One of the better ones, but definitely the more expensive ones, they have a vegan, a vegetable, and a, and a beef broth, is Ripe Nutrition, R-I-P-E. They sell it at Good Goddess in Yorkville. It's about 20 to $22 per quart. So it's, it's a lot more love put into it, uh, a lot more good and wholesome ingredients, but it's definitely an investment. So if that's how you wanna go, you can go that way. Uh, Organic Garage, Whole Foods has bone broth, I'm pretty sure in the freezer section. Uh, the farmer's markets usually have them too. Witchwood Barns, Brickworks, Sororan Markets on Mondays. So the other thing, if you have no interest or time in doing any of those two things, this is your last resort. It's definitely not as good as making broth. This is a powdered bone broth. This one is Organica. It's ginger, they have other flavors. They have a chicken one as well. So. This, it's, it has, it's beef protein powder, but it's from a bone broth. You could add this to hot water with your vegetables. It definitely won't taste as good, but this is your like last alternative, last alternative if you're like, I'm not doing it, go for this one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? If not, um, I think that's pretty much everything we wanted to cover. Another thing, um, oh, it's if you fifteen dollars. Guys... Is it fifteen dollars at Sanigan's? I saw it on the shelf for eight ninety nine. I thought, okay, so maybe it's fifteen, <clears throat> but um, you can also buy fresh cups of it. So those are your options. Mm -hmm. Impact Kitchen's about like maybe thirteen, fifteen, something like that as well. Yeah. Another quick tip for you guys: if um, if you are doing your shopping this weekend, if you guys go to Costco, you probably already know this. But it's a great place to buy things like, you know, avocados, lemons, mm -hmm. frozen fruits. That's really good because you're going to need a lot of frozen berries. It's Costco, um, right? Berries. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah, if you yeah. have a Costco a lot, Yeah, a lot of frozen berries on this program. So that's a good place to buy them there. One of my favorite smoothie ingredients, I don't know if you guys like cherries. I'm a huge cherry fan, like the dark organic cherries. They have them at Costco usually. And one of our, black, the Black Forest Goddess, the Black Forest Beauty smoothie has cherries and cacao powder. If you have that, it's delicious. So there's berries you can get there. You can also find um, frozen avocados sometimes or fresh avocados. Lots of the spinach, the greens, arugula, depending on what they have. It's a pretty good price for those big tins. So you can get some spinach there, maybe one or two of those. We freeze some so that we always have them, they don't go bad. Um, they have hemp hearts there if you wanna add those to your smoothies. They also have MCT oil, lemons, limes, sweet potatoes, if you wanna get your sweet potatoes. 
and your onions there for the broth. Sometimes I have carrots. Uh, they sometimes have coconut milk there, but it's very rare that they do, but coconut milk you can add, to, or almond milk unsweetened, make sure it's unsweetened to your smoothies, which will make it a little thicker, a little bit nicer. Um, to answer your question, Lindsay, um, yes, you're, you can, you can um, make oh. your food in advance and put, put it in the fridge. I would say you'd probably want to um, not leave a smoothie in the fridge any more than a day. Um, then it can kind of start to get a little bit kind of gross maybe. But um, with the with the bone broth, I think you should be able to cook that all in advance. Yeah, you can cook all the bone broth, put them in like jars, like portion it out, have them ready to go, take them out the day before so they're defrosted. And definitely bone broth you can do that with if you want to do it all in one shot. That's cool. Um, with the meal prep, I was going to go into the meal prep a bit. We have a video on it as well that's going to be coming. You want your lemons, you want to squeeze them ahead of time, put them in a jar, put it in the fridge. That should stay good for at least the whole 10 days. And... Um, once you have all your ingredients for the smoothie, your berries and everything, you can take little Ziploc bags, you can take, you know, little containers if you want and put all the, the frozen ingredients in there and package them like into seven different days. Or if you're planning on doing more, like maybe make 10 of them in case you want to make it an extra one, uh, mix up the berries or whatever. Then you can just literally put it into your, into your, um, blender, add the greens powder, add some water and some hemp hearts, or like put everything into those bags. So you can do that, that's what I usually do. So it's like quick and easy. It's actually very easy. It saves you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? Did that answer your question, Lindsay? I hope so. Anyone else? We kind of went over everything. Yeah, that's um, a lot of information there. Yeah. But you guys can always refer back to this uh, video. We're gonna post it on the page. So if you ever have any questions, you have this video, you can ask questions on the page. If you really need to, you could ask us, uh, but we encourage you to keep your questions on the page. The Facebook page, mm -hmm. yeah. And we're gonna use the Instagram group, that the chat, just for reminders, not necessarily for, if you wanna add something, you can, but let's not make it too invasive in people's private inbox. So if you have any questions, do it directly to us, um, but put it in the Facebook group. If you can introduce yourselves in the Facebook group and just say, hi, mm -hmm. this is why I'm doing it. These are my goals for the work, for the challenge. For the reset that would be super awesome that way we get kind of like a community feel which I think is actually the most special part about it is people yeah. sharing their experience so you don't feel alone that's like a big part of it so if you're not part of the group and you don't want to participate in the Facebook you're kind of missing out on a good portion of the program itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah well thank you so much for following along with us we're really excited to start this program with you guys um, I hope you guys feel ready to go. Did you want to say I something? I did want to add something. I just want to be sure some people had questions about the the puree. Um, so the bone broth, you can kind of sip through the day if you want to. But the bone, the puree is basically the base is your bone broth. So you have two cups of bone broth. You add some fresh greens to your blender. Sometimes um, I saute the vegetables I want to put in beforehand so that they're a little bit more flavorful, they're a little more cooked down, easier to digest. You can saute those and we give you proportions in your guidebook, how much to put. And it's going to be really filling because you're getting a lot of fiber in there. You blend it with your broth and the vegetables and your sprouts and whatever you want to put in, maybe a little coconut milk, a little apple cider vinegar, some salt and some fresh herbs will really make it taste good. Make it liquidy enough so that it doesn't feel like you're drinking slop. Add some more liquid, add some more broth so that it's a nice consistency. And that's your puree. Okay, and your snacks, you probably wanna pre-chop them um, on Monday or Tuesday so that you have them ready to go, all your vegetable snacks, and you can portion those out as well. Um, I think, I yeah. think that's covering your Yeah, if, if you wanted to bake some root vegetables, the last thing, if you wanted to bake some root vegetables ahead of time, like your, you know, some parsnips or some um, beets and what else? Be? sweet potatoes, anything like that that we have in there. Those are good for your workout days or even for a snack just to like chew on. So, so yeah, you'll bake those and that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any other questions in the live video? Request to be in the live video. Do you... Okay, Amy, do you wanna be in the live video? Let's see. Go live with Amy. Well, we're going to probably end it. If you have any questions, um, you can message us. I'm not sure how that works. I don't want to ruin the video. But um, Amy, if you have any questions, put them into the comments right now. We'll keep it open for another minute or two. 
I know we've taken a good amount of your time, but you can always review this, fast forward it to parts that you need. And I'm Stephanie. I'm Christian. And, and we're uh, here to support you. We're your coaches. We are here to help guide you. And we hope you have the best experience ever. We really do want to hear your feedback. We want to make this program you know, doable, easy. If you have any recommendations, if you have anything that you find that maybe doesn't you know, mm, align you. or work for you, that you have suggestions, please share those with us through the program or in your feedback make notes so that you can remember and we just really hope that you get a lot out of this that mm. you can share this with your community of people so that they can benefit as well yeah we really hope this is a, an impactful program for you and uh, we're excited to get started all right so we'll see you guys uh, on day one yeah so if you have any questions let us know pick up your packages if you haven't and we'll see you guys soon day one check out your emails in your inbox and the facebook group see you guys soon wait save it make sure it's saving are you sure you want to end the video end